Vice Kamala Harris is headed to Arizona today, where she'll push for abortion rights. Just days after the state Supreme Court ruled to reinstate a near total abortion ban dating back to the Civil War. The ruling has prompted protests across Arizona. It's caused confusion in clinics and sparked a new campaign slogan for Democrats. Donald Trump did this. NBC's Amy Schlossendorf is joining us now in Tucson, Arizona, and also with us, former Democratic Senator Doug Jones of Alabama and Republican political strategist and former GOP congressional advisor Rena Shaw. Yamish, what should we expect from the vice president's event there today, and what does it mean to have this trip there at this moment? Well, Vice President Kamala Harris is expected to deliver a fiery speech here denouncing that 1864 law and the Arizona State Supreme Court saying that this near total ban on abortion can go into effect. Now, she's going to be saying that she really blames Donald Trump in particular for this ish situation in Arizona, as well as the patchwork of, air, of abortion laws across the country. Now, her, the campaign has put out a number of parts of her speeches that are really going to be talking about how aggressively she wants to go after Donald Trump. I want to read to you part of the speeches that they put out. She said, she's going to be saying, we all must understand who is to blame. Donald Trump is the architect of this health care crisis. If Donald Trump gets the chance, he will sign a national abortion ban. Here's what a second Trump term looks like. More bans, more suffering, less freedom. Now, of course, the vice president is coming here at this moment while former President Donald Trump is trying to distance himself from this Arizona State Supreme Court ruling. He's also vowing that he's not going to sign a federal abortion ban if he were to be elected. But she's really going to come here, talk to people who are trying to have a ballot in initiative put on the ballot in November that would enshrine abortion rights into the state constitution. She wants to tell everyone, don't believe Donald Trump when he says he's not going to sign a federal abortion ban. I also want to, of course, point out that the vice president has become a very vocal supporter of abortion rights. She's really the most prominent voice in the Biden administration when it comes to abortion rights. She has, of course, the reproductive health tour that she launched. She's gone to Wisconsin, Michigan, a number of other states we could put up for people. But I also want to make the distinction here. She's coming to this as a campaign event. And Harris aides tell me that she really wanted to come here as a campaign event because she wanted to take the gloves off. She wanted to be as aggressive as possible instead of on the official side where she sometimes does not name check Donald Trump, where she sometimes is really limited by the Hatch Act. So it's going to be an interesting scene here as the vice president comes to this community center right behind me. Alcindor, uh, Yamish Alcindor, thank you so much. So the Biden campaign allies have, have really zeroed in on one message. And Yamish pointed it out in the remarks that have been prepared ahead of the vice president's uh, visit there. But the bottom line is this message is blame Donald Trump. Watch this. Because of Donald Trump, millions of women lost the fundamental freedom to control their own bodies. This is on Donald Trump. There's no one more responsible for the fact that we are here today than Donald Trump. It's okay. I know. <laughs> so, Senator, Trump has often been the master of some simple messaging that really sticks, but this is one message that Democrats are trying to get stuck in voters' heads. Who exactly is this messaging intended to target, and do you think it's effective? I think it's very effective. I, yeah, I think it's intended to target not just women, but I think it's it targeted at families. I think it's targeted about all Americans who believe in uh, controlling them, their own bodies and freedom, because this is a, a, an issue where freedom has been taken away from folks. And I think the vice president going to uh, Arizona is sending a message to a, across America. This is the battle lines. This is what Donald Trump's vision of America is. Look at Florida, look at Alabama, look at Arizona. This is what we see in a second Donald Trump term, and everyone should be concerned. One Republican legislator tells NBC News that GOP Senate candidate Carrie Lake is now calling Arizona House members. She's calling them, urging them to repeal this 1864 near total ban on abortion, Rena, clearly a recognition of just how politically perilous this all could be. But will that be enough for candidates like Lake? In this moment, even extremist Carrie Lake understands what's on the line here, an election that will have uh, serious effects for those who are down ballot. And, and, and this is what happens when abortion ends up on the ballot. Republicans take more than just a punch. They take losses. And I must say this to any Republican listening anywhere. When women do not have bodily autonomy, 
they are not full, free, and equal citizens of this representative democracy. Let those words sink in. Women like me have come up within Republican Party circles hearing about liberty and freedom, and you want to take it all away from those of us who deserve it, who understand that abortion isn't just about terminating whether cells or a life or whatever it is. We have separation of church and state here, and what I see increasingly is these Republican-led state legislators legislatures legislating with their holy book and going to extremes that not even super Republican voters are okay with. In Florida, in Arizona, you are going to see women mobilized who are independently minded, and that should have Republicans from coast to coast worried for years to come. And just a reminder, there in Arizona in the 2022 election, you talked about how this issue of abortion has been a motivating factor for so many voters. 62% in the exit polls there in Arizona said that they believed abortion should be legal in most or all cases. Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego, who's running against Carrie Lake for the Senate seat there in Arizona, has been accusing her of backpedaling on this abortion issue. On X last night, he posted two videos of Lake. Watch. We are going to have a great law that's already on the books, so it will prohibit abortion in Arizona except to save the life of a mother. This total ban on abortion that the Arizona Supreme Court just ruled on is out of line with where the people of this state are. The issue is less about banning abortion and more about saving babies. Okay, so, Senator, we've seen this with Donald Trump and now Carrie Lake. Why can't Republicans figure out how to talk about this issue without spinning themselves into knots? Because when Roe versus Wade was the backstop, they could say and do anything that they wanted to do, and they don't think past the consequences. Carrie Lake is literally becoming a caricature of her own self. She reminds me of the old French politician, uh, that and it goes out every day and says, oh, there go the people. Uh, let me follow them because I am their leader. That's how silly this has become for Republican politicians these days. But it's based in part on 50 years of pandering to a base. Uh, and they did not anticipate what's going on. And now they're ha struggling. They're struggling to reconcile their former self with their current self because it's all about the, the politics. And they're getting hit on this issue from both sides. In fact, Lake was speaking at the University of Arizona last night. She was confronted by voters on both sides of this abortion issue. Take a look at that moment. But you do realize that that law is not going to survive November. But we have to take a step back. I'm not even talking 30,000 foot level. I'm talking a step back. Six months from now, are you going to be okay? So she had sort of different answers to two different questions that were related to this issue coming from, again, different vo points of view. Rena, your reaction to, to what we heard? Well, you know, anytime you kick abortion back to the states, you're going to have unintended disastrous consequences. And we know that who's going to suffer the large uh, those consequences largely, it's going to be women of lower socioeconomic status, it's going to be black and brown women largely. And so this whole dream of having states decide what we're seeing with these draconian bans is putting, uh, you know, these lawmakers or people who seek to be in office in tough positions to have to articulate where they think life begins. And frankly, this is not where the Republican Party should be in a presidential election year. And putting on an operative hat for a moment, I mean, we talked about years ago the 15 to 20 week sort of window being what was most palatable to even Republican voters. Now you see moderate Republican voters, you know, being for over 40 some percent of them are looking at these bans from from state to state and saying. Ugh, we can't believe this. We are angry at the Republican Party. We don't know what that's going to lead to. But I will say this. The hypocrisy here is so rich. I, back in 2008, when I was a senior staffer on Capitol Hill and the Affordable Care Act was passing, we used to talk about, we Republicans used to talk about how decisions need to be between a person and their doctor. This is so hypocritical. This is putting bureaucrats right in between, again, decisions that should be between a woman and her doctor.
And that coming from a Republican woman. Um, I think that's important for us to highlight. Rena, thank you for offering your perspective. Great to have you here as well as Senator Doug Jones. It's good to see you too. Thank you both for joining us. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.